Good evening. Hi, Hannah. Good evening. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I am. It is World AIDS Day. Mm -hmm. So I find it kind of a trippy thing to think about AIDS in the midst of like a never ending pandemic mm -hmm. with like a new wave being found in the United States today mm -hmm. or, or just recently. Mm -hmm. um, just because I think back so clearly, like I remember watching Oprah mm -hmm. in the 80s mm -hmm. and hearing about AIDS as a kid, you know? Yeah. And where we are now is so different from where we were then. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking about it, maybe it, we can compare the experience now in some ways to the experience our children are having or the experience then to, in some ways, the experience our children are having now um, mm -hmm. with this current uh, pandemic. I mean, there are large differences, but the fear, um, I think, was real. You know? And the... Um the like once you hear something it getting lodged in your head is the way things are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a guest star. Mm -hmm. Good night. I'm not going to bed now. Okay. I want you to be my banana. No problem. After I'm finished, I'll come down. With your man? Yes. We are uh piano players in this house. Mm -hmm. Even though I am not um that skilled, I do read music well. Oh so nightly we do our piano. I didn't know Little about tidbit. that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about this, but I feel like we're gonna have to bring it up in a couple weeks when we do our chill. Yeah. Let's revisit. I've been taking banjo lessons, so more on that <laughs> in the future. But yeah, you were saying I it's uh it's there are a lot of similarities, and I think that fear is probably the biggest similarity. And mm -hmm. um and a level of exclusion mm -hmm. um, for people that do have the virus. Um, but I'm so happy, of course, and so proud of how far the world has come uh, with AIDS and and how we address AIDS and um, and different populations. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, the female population, which is what we are concentrating, we concentrate on this broadcast. That population, as of um, 2018 to now, has decreased the incidence of AIDS, especially in African, Black, uh, American, Black women uh, in this country. That was a uh, demographic where um, the incidence had started to really increase mm -hmm. and, and take off. Mm -hmm. They said we're on Christmas list. Okay. I will be downstairs in a second. Because we have to give it to Anne. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, there are a lot of milestones that we have passed that have been positive uh, and, uh, and very encouraging. But of course, there are um, still um, avenues that need to be addressed. And a lot of that is in the disparity uh, of diagnosis and also in the disparity of, of treatment and type of treatment. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm glad you brought that up because when we were talking about comparing AIDS HIV AIDS to COVID, one of the biggest things to me is just equity, mm -hmm. um, equity of um, treatments, equity of access to education around it, mm -hmm. um, all these type of things. Um, I remember just like, it, like ages ago, just something went into my head about like a misconception of how you could, it could be transmitted. And I remember, mm -hmm. I, cause maybe it was on that Oprah episode, but it was around a toothbrush or something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are not ways that it can spread mm -hmm. unless there would be like a cut in someone's mouth or something. I'm like, not to start with, like, not that I'm sharing toothbrushes all the time, yeah. <laughs> but, like, but there's a lot of misconceptions around how you can contract it. Correct. You no. Know, yeah. And even though obviously uh, you don't want to have exposure uh, by fluid. You don't want, you know, that's the main type of um, exposure, exposure through blood, um, sexual fluids, seminal fluid, vaginal fluids, rectal fluids, breast milk, um, not enough in saliva to, to transmit it. Um, you know, HIV, the virus does not live long outside of the host. And so that is something that I think, you know, many people had to learn during that time and also continue to learn. 
um, mm -hmm. now. And so you're right, that, that disparity uh, in knowledge and that disparity in access to care is what perpetuates um, um, any type of virus. Mm -hmm. um, PrEP, um, which is stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis is available, you know, and should be used for those individuals who are in high-risk communities and have high-risk sexual behavior. Um, mm -hmm. Those individuals who are in um, relationships with partners that have HIV, even if you're pregnant, using PrEP can help to um, decrease your uh, uh, chance of obtaining the virus uh, and also for your unborn child if you do become pregnant. You know, when I when we were talking about doing this, the first person I thought about was Billy Porter. Um, he's a Broadway actor. He's on um, some television shows also. Um, just, I think, a phenomenal person who has been living with HIV since 2007 and mm -hmm. just recently came out. And a lot of that reason he said he recently came out is just because of his fear of being um, judged. And I found that surprising because I think of the disease now as one that is manageable, one that you can live with, especially because of the advent of science now mm -hmm. um, and how most people with HIV that are treating it are undetectable and live normal lives. Um, the, 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 the demographic now that is still um, having challenges in, in getting treatment and increase and still having challenges in controlling the spread based by uh, bless you of HIV is uh, black and Latin Latino men. And so again, it comes back into the racial inequities that we, we discuss a lot on this program. But again, there's to uh, undetectable equals untransmittable. So I, you'll see a lot of, if you go to Twitter, you can find a bit, a lot of um, people talking about world AIDS day today. And so you see that U equals U. So what does it mean? Mm -hmm. Undetectable equals untransmittable. So undetectable means just by a um, normal lab that 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 assesses for the virus, assessing for the virus by oral swab or by blood, that the count of the virus is not detectable by that lab. You know, if you're using, I, I guess, um, um, more particular assays to just look for the presence, you'll be able to find it. But if you're just mm -hmm. using the average screening uh, test that the, the viral count is not detectable. And okay. so then, of course, just like with any virus, the higher your viral count is, the higher the chance is that you can transmit the virus. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is not to say that if you're undetectable that you should not, uh, and you know you have HIV, that you should not be um, using protection to help prevent <clears throat> the spread, like barrier method. Mm -hmm. um, condoms during sex, you should still be doing that. But having an undetectable result decreases the chance of, uh, of spreading the virus, mm -hmm. which is great. And mm -hmm. so that just comes back into the education that we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that you're educating yourself um, and those around are being educated. You know, since um, 2018, for every um, um, 100 people with HIV that knew they had HIV or 100 people that had HIV, 86 of those knew that they had HIV, which is great. So you know, need to know your status. Mm -hmm. um, for every woman with HIV, since 2018, 90, every 90 women out of 100 knew that they had HIV. So that high, um, mm -hmm. that, that high number that of people knowing their status is important. ACOG, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, recommends that women have um, HIV tests at least once yearly, you mm -hmm. know, at least once in their lifetime, but it is a benefit to have it at least once yearly. And that's something extra that you need to ask for. That doesn't come as your standard, you know, yearly gynecological visit. Well, I'll say this. Um, it is a recommendation that ACOG has put out that that be part of uh depending on population, part of a yearly exam. Mm -hmm. I offer it to all patients that are sexually active. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I offer it verbally is because I don't want anyone to ever feel um, shy or scared or intimidated to ask me. So I automatically offer it. That's great. Um, but it is something that if you are sexually active 
in a and you're not in a monogamous relationship where you have concerns about your partner not being in a monogamous relationship, then you should consider getting it done yearly. And mm-hmm. that there is no, there should not be stigma attached to that. You know, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with making sure you know your status. That's how you make sure you stay alive. That's how you make sure you stay well. Um, women with HIV have a higher incidence and risk of uh, cervical mm-hmm. cancer. Um, because of the Mommy? HPV virus. And Mommy, so I think I threw our Christmas list in the trash. I will be downstairs in a couple Can minutes. Okay. It? Yes. So they have a higher incidence of um, cervical cancer. Women with HIV do not fall in that same category of um, low risk women who can have periodic uh, screenings or screenings every three to five years, they should have more frequent screenings for um, uh, cervical cancer. So knowing your status can also help to prevent other problems, to prevent prevent other uh, diseases and conditions. Yeah, I didn't realize, but in getting ready for this, I saw that you can also have a higher risk of COVID complications with that status. But I think you mentioned um, Billy Porter. um, Mm -hmm. And to me, the first person that came to mind was Jonathan Van Ness, who Mm -hmm. recently came out as HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And there is, I just really applaud these people for making such a private thing public in Mm -hmm. order to destigmatize. Because Mm -hmm. what that means to me is that you would be less afraid to get tested because you don't feel so quite so alone about it. And also it just, it just wakes up that part of my brain that's still remembering it as this death sentence. It's, it's very different now, but once that knowledge gets locked in your brain, it's hard to change that if you're not in, if that's not in your life all the time. Yeah. You know, I, it's, I do find this interesting and this is just kind of like a, a statistic not based on any study, but based off of my experience in the office, Uh uh, women are more accepting of a gonorrhea, chlamydia, trichomonas test yearly than an HIV test. And oftentimes when I have a patient that comes in and says, I want an STD test, HIV is not included in their minds in that. They're just thinking about chlamydia, gonorrhea, and, and trichomonas. But, you know, um, there is not a stigma, there should not be a stigma with, um, if you're comfortable expressing your status, because that should be, you would be empowering other people to know their status, Mm -hmm. but there should also not be stigma around getting tested and knowing your own status. Mm -hmm. Even if you are in a monogamous relationship, if there is any concern, even if there's no concern, you just want to know your baseline status. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it. You should Mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. It's a simple test. It can be by blood, can be by uh, oral swab. Okay. I didn't know that. And then, um, so what are things that, what are other things that we should keep in mind for reducing our risk? So ways to reduce your risk, condoms, 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 uh, and decrease sexual partners. Um, that that's first, um, for no, if you are using, um, um, needles for drugs, no sharing of needles, that is, and that does increase your risk. Um, being aware of your partner's status, you know, so if you are in a, having sex with multiple people, honestly, being aware of how many people they're having sex with, um, that, that increases, uh, the chance that you, uh, protect yourself against, um, against HIV. For my patients that, um, use condoms, I recommend keeping condoms with them, um, Um, especially if you're having sex with multiple partners, always keeping a condom with you. Mm -hmm. That way you're not reliant on your partner to have condoms. Mm -hmm. Uh, Female and and or male condoms do protect against uh, HIV. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and for those who are, we talked about this the other day, intimate partner violence. We talked about that a couple of episodes ago, uh, Mm -hmm. shows ago. Um, Getting out of that situation actually does increase decrease your uh, chance of, of getting any type of STD. Uh, mm-hmm. And HIV is included in that. Um, there is a higher incidence of transmission of STDs in women who um, unfortunately have um, uh, intimate partner violence as part of their relationship. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, and so if you missed that episode, feel free to go back and check our YouTube channel, which will have access to that, as well as links to numbers that you can call if that's your situation or someone that you know is in that situation. Um, great. Well, uh, anything else? Any other thoughts about it? You know, again, I'm just, I think, very encouraged, especially with the numbers surrounding women, especially minority women, Black women, that mm -hmm. Since 2008, those numbers have started to decrease. Uh, you know, there's still um, not zero. Zero would be the, the greatest, but the numbers have started to decrease. So that shows that um, transmission has gone down and also knowledge and, and awareness has gone up. And so if that same thing can happen for all demographics, I think that would be great. Um, advents of science are just continuing to increase. Um, we talk about PrEP and how effective it is. Um, and hopeful for vaccines against uh, HIV, um, things are starting to come down the pipeline. And so I think, you know, that is a very encouraging thing. And hopefully um, we have the day where it is more of a curable virus um, than just a, one that a disease that the one that's just uh, managed, but it is can be managed very well. And people with HIV do live normal lives. Mm -hmm. and so know your status because you can be treated and you can also prevent other things from occurring. Mm -hmm. I think this is as good time as any to also just um, send gratitude to all the researchers and um, science minds that have been working on managing um, this that has been a, a major plague and has caused mm -hmm. so many unnecessary deaths. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Dr. Oja Karens, for taking time to break it down for us and to bring awareness to this today. And thanks to all the people who are out there who are working on this and um, from the people in the labs to the people who are getting tested and checking their own status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I, I uh, echo those sentiments. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks. To nice to see you. Dr. Oja Karens. Yes. Are you ready? You better be sharpening your sword because next week is duel with a doula. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very excited about next week. That's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It may be just a respectful conversation. <laughs> But either way, it's going to be delightful. We're going to welcome um, Sheena Jeffers, who is a life coach and a doula and has so much to bring to the table um, and is a new mother herself. So I'm very excited for next week. Yeah, me too. I'm glad she's coming on. I'm glad to do it, um, to have the discussion. Cool. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks. Y'all have a good night. Good night.